I'm Devin. And I'm Cynthia. Today we're here to tell you about the eighth principle of green chemistry, which is to reduce derivatives. This principle states that the use of unnecessary derivatization, such as blocking groups, should be avoided or prevented when necessary, because these steps require additional reagents and can generate waste. Well, that's quite a mouthful. To simplify things, we're going to focus on one common example of derivatization, which is the use of protecting groups in chemical synthesis. In this field, chemists make useful compounds such as catalysts, polymers, or pharmaceuticals. Often, syntheses require multiple steps to turn starting materials into final products. Each step generates waste, so fewer steps is almost always better. Decreasing the number of steps in the synthesis saves time, energy, and waste. One factor that increases the number of steps in a synthesis is the use of protecting groups. What are protecting groups? Why would we use them if they make syntheses longer? That sounds inefficient. Well, let's say you want to carry out a reaction on just one reactive site of a molecule that has two, represented by this color-coded Lego here. This reaction doesn't go as planned. Instead, both sites react to form an undesired product. In this situation, we can describe the reaction as unselective. We need to find another way to make our desired compound. One way to overcome an unselective reaction is to block or protect the site of undesired reactivity. The chemical group that protects this site is called the protecting group. As you can see, the protecting group is installed in the first step. Now that the problematic reactive site is blocked, the original reaction can be carried out on the second step. And then the protecting group must be removed in the third step. Protecting groups can help us when our reactions are not selective enough. But a reaction that would ideally take one step actually takes three steps. Let's go over that again. In order to make one net change to the molecule, we need to First, protect one side. Second, do my reaction on the side left exposed. And third, deprotect. You can see why Principle 8 recommends that their use be minimized where possible. Yeah! Protecting groups are kind of like training wheels on a bike. The first time you ride a bike, the training wheels help you to keep on track while you're learning balance. As you become more confident, you're able to ditch the training wheels and ride more efficiently without their cumbersome weight slowing you down. Likewise, the first time we make a new molecule, we use whatever chemistry is available to us to make it as quickly as possible. This usually means that we're using inefficient protecting groups. As soon as we have found a reliable way to synthesize the molecule, we need to work towards removing protecting groups from our syntheses. This is done by discovering new reactions that are more selective. But we can't just eliminate protecting groups entirely. We need to rethink the chemistry behind making the molecules in order to make protecting groups unnecessary. Increasing selectivity is currently an active area of research. Chemists are constantly finding new ways to uphold Principle 8, avoiding protection and deprotection steps. One example of this is the use of naturally occurring catalysts that work in water at mild temperatures. Enzymes. So if we do our homework and choose the right catalyst, we might be able to do a selective reaction at one of the two reactive sites without adding a protecting group? Yeah, this would reduce the number of steps needed in a synthesis and the amount of waste byproducts generated. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to view the rest of our series on the principles of green chemistry. If you want to learn more about the Green Chemistry Initiative, check us out on our website, Facebook, or Twitter.